so uh, if you're talking about all this methylation we have already seen the previous footage of from my video i am joining all these things now uh, this is uh, about histone modification we have seen and i've talked before that histone modification is very much common in h3 and h4 of the histone rather than h2a and h2b though h2 h2b also involved in the modifications the chemical modifications but histone 3 and histone 4 are much more eager to get any chemical modifications so if you look at here for the histone 3 and histone 4 because they have a lot of lysine and arginine residues and for the modifications like acetylation and methylation majorly methylation lysine residues plays a vital role so we are looking at the modifications like like acetylation like methylation like deacetylation also demethylation which are also involved but these are same kind of things and also phosphorylation now remember i have told uh, thing this thing this is a very basic thing about that this acetylation helps in unwinding the dna from the histone opening up the dna for the replication and transcription while deacetylation is going against that methylation can help in either unwinding the dna from the histone or rewinding the dna into histone so it depends on the situation now we have also seen how acetylation takes place in, in, in major scale but if you look at here in histone 3 and 4 what we know about that all of these are vulnerable to methylation, acetylation and phosphorylation all of them they can have all of these modifications but in histone 3 this methylation is very much common in histone 3 this is methylation is the most abundant thing that happens to histone 3 on the other hand in histone 4 acetylation is, is the most common kind of modification that we see in a H4 or histone 4 right so if you look at here at the detailed process of methylation what it will look like let me draw for the H3 so let's say this is the H3 and now that H3 is methylated so this is the methylated form of H3 and these two forms normal and methylated form of H3 is interchangeable interconvertible and if you look at the form here this process of methylation takes place due to the effect of histone methyl transferase or HMT. This is an enzyme, histone methyl transferase, which transfers the methyl group to the histo H3 histone, right, to, to make it methylated. So, histone methyl transferase work here. And for this process to occur, there is a coenzyme factor, cofactor that is acting as a is adenosylmethionine as a cofactor here for this process to occur and we know if SAM is involved or S adenosylmethionine is involved ultimately the process of methyl transfer ultimately it will produce S adenosine homocysteine or SHA SAM to SHA the simple pathway similarly the opposite thing that is demethylation of H3 to normal H3 that can also take place and that is uh, brought by again histone demethyl transferase or HDMT right and in this case what we here see here is the alpha ketoglutarate and also oxygen is required for this process to occur because oxidation it cleaves the methyl group out and it will generate succinic acid or succinate whatever along with carbon dioxide so if you look at here this is the scheme of methylation of the histone 3 and this methylation takes place in the lysine residues more often the lysine 10 9 and actually all these cases of methylation or acetylation majorly methylation they take place in multiple locations in the same in terminal tail of histone like in H histone 3 h3 we'll see it occurs in multiple locations dimethylation trimethylation tetramethylation even can take place it depends on where exactly the methylation happening it depends on how many methylation is happening to finally get the idea of what kind of histone modification it will bring right so that in a sense is this process